Hi YouTube, welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to review the sump, which I did before, but I'm going to do it again, uh, somewhat more in depth, so you can clearly understand what the sump is all about, and how Red Sea has uh, incorporated the sump into its reefer series. Ever since the release of the reefers, uh, Red Sea has uh, supplied a sump together with the tank, so actually it's somewhat an all-in-one system where you only have to buy all the other technology yourself but the sump, so the wet part of the tank is included. Today I'm going to show you both the integrated parts and the parts I added myself. Sort of like the skimmer, like a chiller, but more of that later. I'll start off with the integrated components and those are in the left cabinet, the wet cabinet as we call it, and on the right side is the dry part of the cabinet, and I'll discuss that in the second part of this video. So, let's start off with the left side. As you can see, there's actually two, uh, 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 two little aquariums in here. One of them is the actual sump, which I'm focusing on right now, where all the water that's coming from your tank is going to be filtered with all the technology you add yourself, like the skimmer. The second really small tank is actually very small and it contains RO water, so uh, it's water that you filter yourself or you buy in the store which has been uh, prepared to use in a reef tank uh, without uh, all the things that you find in tap water. So it's clean water and uh, the way Red Sea has integrated it is there is on the back, far back side, which is a little hard to see, there's a small hose and that hose connects to a float valve which is on the left as you can see right here. So the thing that happens is whenever the water level in this part of the sump is getting too low, so it's actually going to be like this, then the float valve will drop down, which will cause the hose to be opened up and to leak some water from the, from the little tank into this part of the sump. It's actually a pretty simple idea, which for me works very well. I've heard some people who have problems with it. There is a small valve attached when you buy it. You can just take that off and just attach the hose directly from the uh, from the small water tank to the float valve, and that won't cause any issues. So, if you're having problem, there's a, a small plastic T piece which is uh, in there. You can just take it out. It doesn't work. Don't worry. It won't do any harm. It won't leak any water. I've been using it like that for not the past one and a half years, so it's perfectly fine to use it that way. The second part that's included is the hosing, so the, the piping actually. It's right here on the back. It, it has three pipes, one of which moves the water back up into the aquarium, one where it comes down, which you can adjust by using this knob. And then there's an overflow valve for whenever something gets stuck in here or whenever you uh, you put it like a way that it's, it's a little bit overflowing, which I'm doing actually to make it as silent as possible because you don't want any slurpy noises in your house. It works well, well enough at least. So uh, I think it's uh, it's fairly simple to use. You know, you only have to use the big black knob which says Red Sea to uh, adjust it whenever you feel that's necessary. Um, what I did do is add a little plumbing myself because I like I, I, I found that I needed another pump inside the aquarium uh, to supply my internal equipment with water so what I did is I made two separate uh, pi piping networks <laughs> one of which is attached to my main uh, my main uh, return pump, which is on the back right here with a yellow hose, connects directly and then goes straight up, straight into the tank. And then there's a second one, which is, that, which is right here, which is attached to a silicone hose, which feeds the internal systems, like the UV system, which is right here, and the chiller, which is on the right side of the tank in the cabinet, which I'll show you later. So, that's the integrated part. The things I've added myself is, uh, of course, the skimmer in all its glory. It's a Vertex Alpha 200. It's not the newest of skimmers, but it does a really w nice job of uh, removing uh, uh, all kind of uh, dirt from the water. 
and it helps to keep the, 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 the nutrients like P, uh, nitrates and phosphates in check. So that has been working really well. Then there's the two return pumps on the left. The first one is a JCOT DCS 3000, so it's, it, it's able to do 3000 liters per hour, which is more than enough to feed the UV, uh, UVC uh, light and the chiller. And on the back there's the big one, it's a JCOT DC T8000, so it has a capacity of 8000 liters, and that's the one that returns the water into the aquarium. Then in between the bubble trap, I have removed the black uh, foam which comes with it. Um, I've actually used that to make like these little uh, things on which the pumps rest so they don't make vibrating noise from the, from the glass bottom. But what I did do is add uh, carbon inside. It's actually Roa, Roa Carbon from Roa. It's a brand which always makes, also makes Roa Foss which is for removing phosphates, but this carbon is for removing coloration from the water, keeping your water crystal clear. The second, or the next noticeable change I made is uh, these uh, crud catchers, as we like to call them. I will put a link uh, right beneath this video, uh, so you can click it and you can go where you can buy these. It's actually a modification from the standard socks which are supplied by Red Sea. Um, these are made from acrylic material, I'll pull one out, and uh, you can put whatever you want in there. This one is filled with uh, white filter material to filter out the, uh, the, the brown stuff that's coming straight from the aquarium. And then the other one I uh, decided to fill with Roafos, which I mentioned earlier, to remove excess phosphates from your tank. So, that's it for the left part. The UVC light, I've, I haven't mentioned it yet. It's fairly simple. Uh, it's being fed water through it with UVC light, 36 watts, to, uh, to, to make sure bacteria, especially bad bacteria, like white spot bacteria, uh, die and they don't have a chance of infecting your fish. Then, we move to the other side of the tank, the cabinet, which is filled with my own equipment. When you buy a Red Sea tank, there's nothing in there. Uh, it's just uh, uh, an empty cabinet which you can fill up yourself, which I did. Uh, the, the largest thing that's in there is the chiller. It's a chiller by the brand Teco. It's a Teco TK500 tank chiller. And not only does it chill your tank when it's hot outside, uh, but it also uh, heats your tank. So you can use it all year long. Um, in the winter it heats your tank and in the summer it chills your tank, which it cools your tank down, which is a very, very nice way of uh, maintaining temperature, which is a very important part of, uh, of reef tanks. Fish really appreciate constant values that includes temperature. So on the left side, you'll see there's a dosing system. I have discussed what I'm dosing in another video, which I'll link as well. It's uh, ATI Essentials, which is a way to maintain your reef parameters with uh, the addition of Red Sea's NO3PO4X, which is essentially carbon sources to remove uh, excessive uh, nitrates and phosphates from your tank. Then, the, one of the most important things for me in there is the DJ switch, which is uh, a, a, a block with 10, where you can add 10 power, cords uh, and control them individually so you can easily switch off your skimmer when you want to clean it or whatever you attach to it and that's a very easy way to uh, to control the power and to just put it on and off with a, with a flip of a button. The dosing pump is fairly new as well it's a coral box it, it works on Wi-Fi so you have an app and it's very accurate so you can easily change it with the click of a button on your phone or the touch of a screen on your phone. And there's of course the controllers which you probably will know because almost every device you buy will have a controller. So you can, these two are for the return pumps and this one is for the MaxPack gyre which I have in my tank. So that was the right part of the cabinet. I hope this has taught you something.
Now, I also want to show you a little bit of what's inside the tank, uh, which is also nice to see. Because it's attached to something that's within the sump. So let's start off with the gyre. It's actually covered in a lot of uh, coralline algae, other kind of algae, so it might not look pretty, but it does the job quite well. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, creating water movement. I'll sh show like this. So the controller that you saw in the in the uh, in the cabinet is controlling this gyre. It's um, creating flow. I've put it on a random pattern, which means that it will alternate from 10 to 70 percent of its power, um, and it does that in a very random pattern. As you can see right now, it gave two quick bursts with another one, somewhat longer, and then now it comes down a bit and it just decides what to do next. It might be uh, a very low flow for a couple of seconds or even 30 seconds and then it might boost up for, for a couple more seconds just to create really a nice flow uh, which is unpredictable, which of course the corals will really appreciate since yeah, corals like in the sea, they don't have a constant flow every second of the day or every hour of the day. So I think it's a very nice way to, to simulate a, a natural reef as if, as if it were the ocean. Then, um, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention yet yeah, is the return nozzle. The standard return nozzle that you'll get from Red Sea is just a small little pipe which then uh, aims towards the glass and you can edit it a little bit to the left or right but it's it's not very easy to calibrate so what I did is I added a lock line which is actually the brand as well so if you search lock line you will definitely find it it's uh, a way of diverting the current in your tank so it, you attach it to the to the outlet and then it has two flexible uh, hoses on it which you can extend or I have them very fairly short and you can aim them in any direction you want. And that also helps to create a little extra flow, a little diverse current. So as you can see the left one, it's aiming towards this green star polyp, which is doing really well. Uh, I think mainly because there is a lot of flow, which is uh, uh, also quite random. So this grows like, uh, yeah, almost like the plague. It's, it's really a big, big field of grass, what you see greening, uh, growing on the back uh, of the tank. The other outlet is aiming somewhat down because uh, there's a, not a lot of current that's going that way. So that's why I aimed it in that direction uh, so that there's also a little bit of current behind behind the reef over there. Uh, and yeah, to just give every part of the reef the, the flow it deserves. Uh, that's also the only way in which you're going to keep the sand clean. So a lot of people ask me, how do you keep your sand clean? Uh, do you have a special kind of method or equipment to do that. Well, the equipment I have for cleaning the sand is swimming right here. It's a, a white sand sifting fish. Uh, the name is Valenciana sexgutata. I'm not, no, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but if you want me to type it down, just ask in the comments and I'll, I'll put it there for you. It's a, a fairly large fish. I've bought it when it was still a little bit smaller, but since it's eating a lot and sifting a lot, it has grown quite a bit. Yeah, here you can see it's doing the exact same thing I'm just describing. It just takes a large bite of the sand, a uh, mouthful, and then just slowly filters it out and makes... Yeah, that way it, it actually keeps the whole bottom of the whole tank clean. So you do see little pieces of uh, whatever cyano or whatever you want to call it, algae, but it's just little little spots because the fish is doing a wonderful job at keeping it clean as you can see right here it's just uh, clean all over which I really love because one of the things I hate is when a tank when my tank has a lot of algae or red slime algae or green slime algae covering the bottom which is uh, yeah quite nasty and uh, hard to come over if you don't have the right equipment or, or livestock to, to deal with it. So it's a, it's a thing to consider. The Valenciana sexcutata is a fish that's... It, there's one warning I have to make. As you can see, 
right now it's uh, it's swimming back there, and that's actually its lair. Um, it's uh, it's creating a, a quite a nice lair for itself. I've added five kilograms of sand already, but you would hardly notice it because it really likes to make his home. So what he does, as you can see right here, he, he makes his own home, his own cave uh, beneath the rock work, which I don't mind, but it's good, a good thing to consider uh, when, you're, uh, uh, when you're considering to buy one, buying one of these fish, because as you can see, they can make quite the thick layer of sand uh, in your tank. So, well, that was the yeah, that was the review I made of the the, the sump area and the uh, the equipment that's attached to uh, to the tank itself. So I hope you have had a nice uh, view. I hope you liked it. I hope you appreciated the way I explained it. If you don't, uh, please let me know what I can improve for the next videos. Um, the next review I'm planning to do is a review of the lights I'm using which is a Gisaman Aurora, and this one is 150 centimeters, which is the exact width of the tank as well. Uh, it's a light which I have had over a year right now, so I feel comfortable in doing a review of, the, of these lights and telling you, uh, well, if you're considering to buy one, what you should look out for and uh, what kind of bulbs I'm using. So that's it. Um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy my other videos. Please take a look if you haven't yet or subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll try to put out more videos once every week. Um, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's it. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.